Many medium multi-role helicopter assets that NATO allies currently use will reach the end of their life cycle in the 2035 to 2040 time frame and beyond, necessitating replacements. As a result, collaboration has been formed to develop advanced helicopters. And thank you for joining me today as we celebrate the signing of the letter of intent for the next generation rotorcraft capability initiative. The United Kingdom will take part in a European Union-led program to build the technology for the VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, to be utilized in the post-2035 timeframe. The program called ENGRT, or the European Next Generation Rotorcraft Technologies, was first announced in early 2022 and officially launched by the European Union in December same year. The defense ministers of five NATO member nations, the UK, France, Germany, Greece and Italy, signed a letter of intent to develop an entirely new helicopter capability. These members will all benefit from this great opportunity, creating a fleet of new VTOL helicopters that are capable and highly sophisticated in an effort to maintain dominance of the skies in each territory of NATO allies. ENGRT project is being carried out in order to develop a future standard NATO helicopter platform in Europe. A consortium of six NATO countries has prepared a budget of around 26 million euros, or 28 million United States dollars, to define the project's requirements within three years in order to realize the project. Regarding the requirements, it will be built on the most recent market technologies, such as hybrid and electric propulsion, systematic open systems architecture, and dramatically improved flight characteristics. According to Jane's.com, two leading European aerospace manufacturers, Airbus Helicopters and Leonardo Helicopters, will lead this project to develop a vertical takeoff and landing VTOL, platform for the post-2035 period. In late July, the two helicopter manufacturers announced a collaborative agreement noting that the project would pave the way for the future of military helicopters in Europe. The European Defence Fund, a financial institution of the European Union, will fund the ENGRT project. NATO has specified an unmanned or remotely piloted modular medium transport helicopter, as well as digital backbone adoption and multi-sensor fusion with the assistance of artificial intelligence, as an initial requirement. In terms of pricing, NATO has established a maximum price per aircraft of 35 million euros, or 37 million United States dollars, with an average flight cost of no more than 10,000 euros, or 10,500 United States dollars. Technically, the European Next Generation Rotorcraft Technologies is expected to have a helicopter lift capacity of 4,000 kg and a payload of at least 2,500 kg in the internal cabin. These conditions are met at least in conditions of 80% fuel and a maximum takeoff weight of 10 to 17 tons. Helicopters must be able to transport 12 to 16 complete troops weighing an average of 160 kg. In terms of range, the future helicopter will be able to fly at least 900 nautical miles, 1,650 kilometers, with an endurance of 5 to 8 hours, even with external fuel tanks. NATO also has a speed soak requirement, requiring Airbus and Leonardo to develop a helicopter capable of flying at a speed of 407 kilometers per hour. In December 2022, Executive Vice President of Airbus Helicopters Programs Matthew Louvet said that it is the first key project in which the European Commission and the European Union have direct participation with its European Defence Fund. A total of 40 million euros, or about 43 million dollars, in funding is being offered for the project. The European Defence Fund said the project would include examining future requirements, important rotorcraft characteristics and capabilities, other rotorcraft platforms, flight demonstrators, and simulators. As a part of the European Union Next Generation Rotorcraft Technologies project, Airbus Helicopters and Leonardo Helicopters will mainly focus on analyzing and comprehending the requirements of the European Armed Forces for rotorcraft operations beyond 2030. 
A concept phase is set to finish by the end of 2025 and offer a first clear sign of the characteristics and capabilities of the new aircraft. What is the difference between a VTOL and a helicopter? Helicopters, also referred to as rotorcraft, have been used in urban areas for decades and are a familiar sight to all of us. Although both VTOL and conventional rotorcraft make use of propulsion to lift into the air, VTOLs are using more than two propulsion units, referred to as distributed propulsion. If implemented properly, distributed propulsion can increase aircraft safety by sharing critical functions among several components. In conjunction with electric or other types of innovative propulsion, VTOLs also have the potential to reduce aviation's environmental footprint in terms of emissions and noise. I think that looking at the way initiatives and studies have been set up either by NATO or the European Defense Fund, they require collaboration, so that they can acquire best-of-breed capabilities," said Clark on the thinking behind partnering with France-based Airbus helicopters. At the moment we are looking at studies in terms of what we should or shouldn't be doing, and ideally offer a collaborative solution to deliver against a certain mission set. In order to focus on the European next-generation rotorcraft technologies specifically, Leonardo will lean on an aerospace innovation and research center, dubbed iAero based in Somerset, southwest England, which continues to focus on electrical systems, sustainable VTOL technology, airframe health management and system-of-system system capabilities, since opening in February 2022, noted Clark. According to Steve Allen, Vice President of Strategic Development at Leonardo Helicopters, the United Kingdom could join the program in later phases alongside the current participants. Allen stated that, with Phase 1 recently launched, later stages are now being constructed with the possibility of including the United Kingdom. <laughs>